So, there's been a big change that has happened within the past few months, and you're probably wondering, what does this change entail for the winter of 2025 and 2026? Will it lead to more snow or less snowfall this winter? Well, the big change that has happened, at least within the last month, is that now we have shifted into an easterly QBO pattern, and to pretty much summarize what a QBO is... It is essentially a stream of winds that are located just above the equator right around the stratospheric area of the atmosphere that typically shifts every 14 months or so from a westerly direction to an easterly direction between 10 to 30 miles above the surface. So what a westerly QBO typically brings is a stronger polar vortex so that means less cold air moves into the United States while it's the opposite for an easterly QBO pattern because the easterly winds do affect the polar vortex a bit as well as the polar jet stream which allows the polar vortex to be a little bit weaker and that allows a better more a higher possibility of the Arctic air moving into the United States and much of North America in general which would lead to a snowier winter more likely during a easterly QBO pattern. And since the month of June, we've been in a easterly QBO pattern, which on the index would represent negative values. And what this means is that we're a little bit more likely to receive stratos um, um, stratospheric um, warmings right over the polar regions um, of the northern hemisphere. And we see the difference when it comes to a westerly QBO pattern and an easterly QBO pattern. And the key difference you see right here is where is um, when it comes to the stratospheric warming events where we see that during easterly QBO patterns, the chance is quite a bit higher for the possibility of a, a sun stratospheric warmings to happen where during an easterly QBO and an El Nino pattern, 77% of those years have had um, sudden stratospheric warmings, which typically leads to weaker polar vortexes, while during easterly QBO patterns during La Nina phases, 92% of the years have had sudden stratospheric warmings, which means that you're highly likely during easterly QBO patterns, especially during La Nina, to receive stronger polar war, a weaker polar vortex for more Arctic blasts to move into the United States, while for a westerly QBO pattern, the chance reduces. So based on this fact alone that we're likely going to be in an easterly Q QBO pattern by the time we approach winter time frame, because like I said, the QBO, uh, typically a QBO phase lasts right around a year. It could be less than that, of course, in some instances, or it could even be more than that in other instances. But for the most part, it lasts typically anywhere between 10 to 15 months uh, QBO phase. So it is highly likely at this point that the easterly QBO pattern we're seeing, where the index is in the negative, will continue on into the winter time frame. And that makes me believe we're more likely to receive a weaker polar vortex this winter, at least compared to what we would see in a westerly QBO winter. So that's certainly something to keep in mind, and I do believe this does raise the likelihood of receiving heavier snowfall this winter for much of the United States. However, another significant change that I feel like I should point out is the Enzo outlook over the next few months because in my previous winter forecasts, I mentioned that the most likely scenario would be an Enzo neutral phase by the time we approach the winter time frame, and it still remains to be the case. However, I think it's good to point out that we're expecting to be in a La Nina pattern just before it is a little bit more likely um, we're going to enter an Enzo neutral pattern by the time we approach the winter time frame. So I do. So there is that a higher possibility we could in fact be in a La Nina at least, especially during the early part of the winter time frame, compared to seeing a neutral phase. And I think this could also play a significant role in terms of what type of winter we'll see. And the thing that I want to point out is that during the month of October. We're going to be, there's a slightly higher possibility we're going to be in a La Nina pattern compared to a neutral phase. And why I believe this is significant is because, like I just showed you in the previous chart regarding what happens during easterly and westerly QBO patterns, during an easterly QBO pattern and during a La Nina pattern, 
it is the most likely type of con there it is the most likely type of prerequisites that would lead to uh, sudden stratospheric warmings or at least a higher likelihood of that where 92 percent of those years have received sudden stratospheric warmings i'm gonna just call them ssws at this point because i don't want to repeat sudden stratospheric warming for a million times so um but yeah the point is that the la nina you're more likely to receive a weaker polar vortex during easterly QBO patterns. And why this is significant in the month of October is due to the fact that Siberian snow cover during the month of October is critical in determining what type of winter we'll see for pretty much the entirety of North America. Because typically, when there's a little bit more Siberian snow cover, that leads to a weaker polar vortex by the time we approach winter time frame, thus leading to more snowfall right over the United States. And if we were to see a La Nina pattern coincide with the easterly QBO pattern by the month of October, I believe that could enhance the likelihood that the Siberian snow cover during the month of October will be higher than normal, which in return will lead to a weaker polar vortex for the rest of the winter time frame. So I do believe this will contribute to a snowier and colder than average winter for the United States. However, still, despite the fact that we're more likely to receive a La Nina during the fall months and potentially the early winter months, for the vast majority of the winter, it is most likely we're going to be in a neutral pattern. So what I did is that I took all the years where we've experienced an easterly QBO pattern along with uh, Enzo neutral pattern and put them on this climate division plot anomaly to determine the anomalies when it comes to temperature and we clearly see that it's a little bit warmer than normal right over the portions of the midwest around average for most of the eastern united states while it's a little bit cooler than normal in the north or, or at least the western portion of the united states however there's things to point out with this. The first thing is that this is a very small sample size because we're essentially only looking at seven years since 1980 where an easterly QBO pattern coincided with an Enzo neutral winter. So there isn't a large sample size we could really pull from that would confidently say if these anomalies would be um, strongly correct. And another thing to point out is that if we were to take a look at the anomalies, they aren't very strong anomalies. The strongest we see are mainly right around between 1 to 1.5 degrees above or below normal. Very few areas where it's even as low as 2 degrees below normal in between these 7 years on average. So I do, I would take this with a grain of salt and considering the fact that we, we showed that during easterly QBO patterns are both in Enzo um, an Enzo El Nino winter and a La Nina winter show that there's a weaker polar vortex and more um, SSWs that occur. That would make me lead, still lean more to believe that it's going to be colder and snowier than average for much of the United States due to the fact that we're more likely to receive a weaker polar vortex during easterly QBO patterns like we're going to see this winter. So although this um, climate division plot anomaly shows something different, I don't believe the anomalies are necessarily strong enough and the sample size is large enough to really take this with huge consideration. So I would say take this with a grain of salt, but who knows, the, um, the weather is unpredictable and maybe even this small sample size could be an indication of what happens this winter, but we also need to consider what simply happens during an uh, Enzo neutral pattern. Where we see an Enzo neutral pattern brings much colder than normal conditions over the Midwest as well as the Northeast, and combining the fact that it's going to be an uh, uh, easterly QEO pattern, I am leaning more towards the idea it'll be colder and snowier than normal, especially for much of the Eastern United States. So I definitely would um would um potentially prepare for a higher likelihood of a colder and snowier than average winter take it with a grain of salt so because it's still rather difficult to really iron um out what you're going to experience especially since the winter is 
just straight up very hard to predict because we still have stuff like the rain snow line that could mean the difference between you experiencing 10 inches of snowfall or no snowfall at all so you need to take that into consideration as well um with these long-term winter forecasts but it seems like signs are pointing towards that we're at least a little bit more likely to receive a quarter and snowier than average winter for much of the United States rather than not. So definitely at least take that into consideration over the next few months. We're going to get more certainty um, as we get, of course, closer and closer to the winter months. I'll say we'll really get a better idea by the time we approach October because, like I said, the Siberian snow cover plays uh, during that month plays a major role in determining what type of winter we're going to see so i'll definitely keep you guys updated for that and make sure to subscribe for more winter season video updates like this but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching